Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. Hope they can inspire you as well. We'll have links below this video to their sites. Hey, Rabbi Shalom Arush, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yossi Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Alon Anava, Rabbi Yuval Ovadja, Rabbi Daniel Asser, Nisan Baruch Black, David Sachs, Rabbi Michael Skoback, Jews for Judaism, Rabbi David Usher, and Rabbi Yaron Ruvain. As well, if you've never checked out this channel before, I will have a link right below this video to my first video, which explains what MLM for the Soul means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So today's topic is apropos for Shabbat, even though this will be posted Motzei Shabbat. Um, it's about Muktza, and if you don't know what Muktza is, it's... Um, I'll be explaining it in this um, video, and this is from an email by Rabbi Eli Mansour, and he talks about, which is very good information, a lot of you may not know this, and I didn't really know this, about moving things for a permitted purpose. So he talks about this, so one of the categories of muksa is keli shem lachto isor, a utensil whose primary function is prohibited on shop. So why was muksa introduced? Muksa, I forget exactly what the word means, I said I was going to explain it. But, for example, like, let's say, like, a pen you're not going to use. So they were thinking, like, by moving it, it may cause you to, you know, to use it. So they, per they didn't want you to do things like that. So that's what it is. So, so the Chachamim permitted moving such an item only with Tzorach Gufo for another permitted function or with Tzorach Mekomo for its place. So one example of Kli um, Shem Alach Tol Isur is a sewing needle, right? So we don't use a sewing needle. So, as its primary purpose is for sewing, which is prohibited, it would be permitted to use it to remove a splinter. Let's sew our kufo. The same applies to knitting needles. So, chas v'shom, if you have that, you know, sar b'balei chayim, you know, that you have a, a, a pressing need, you have something, you know, you're someone, then you can use it. So, that's very interesting. So, the post defined rulers and scales as kalim shemalach tam li'isor, since it's prohibited to measure on Shabbat. This applies to non-digital scales as well. It is only permitted to use a food scale for the purpose of a mitzvah, such as me measuring matzah or marar for the mitzvah and hazel. So if you want to make sure you're, you're eating the right amount. So one example, other examples include calculators, radios, and flashlights. Accordingly, if someone wants to move his clock radio to see the time, it will be permitted because you're trying to see something. That's what constitutes um, litzora kufo. As long as he's careful not to pull out the plug. He would also be permitted to move the clock radio from the dresser with Tzorach Mekomo, meaning the place, in order to make space for something else that he wants to put there. So that's very interesting, too. So I guess it, it's, it's, if it's a battery-operated one, that would mean. Um, so that's the other issue. So a car is Kalisha Malach Toli Isor. If someone forgot food in the car before Shabbat, he may open the door or trunk to remove the food. That's very interesting. I never knew that before either. So when he said Tzorach Isor, it's prohibited to move it. It's, uh, it's Isor. Isor means prohibited. So, um, this is considered with Tzorach Mekomo. Since the closing, closed door is blocking access to the food, it may be moved out of the way. Of course, this leniency applies only to rare cases in which opening of the, door, the car door or trunk does not activate any lights or electric circuits. Also, there is no rationale to permit directly closing the door after moving the needed items. So, meaning you wouldn't be able to close the door. So, hopefully, if it's in a safe place, you know, if it's in your garage, then that would be okay. But most of the time when you open doors, a lot of times they have alarms too, so it wouldn't be... Uh, a good idea. And, and actually, not just a good idea, it's not permitted, it's Esor. So, clothes that were left in a closed electric dryer before Shabbat may be removed on Shabbat, assuming that opening the dryer door does not activate lights or electric circuits. So, if you left something in there that you needed to wear, it's also another thing that maybe a lot of people didn't know. Like the car, the leniency is because the door is a Kalish and Malach Toli Esor, and opening the door is Litzorach Makomo. Even though it's an Esor, it's because you're needing it for the, for the place, uh, Makomo is placed. So it would not be permitted to directly close the door after removing the clothes. Electric fans and electric blankets are kalim she milach tem isor as well, and may be used as long as they were plugged in before Shabbat. Of course, the dial and button may not be adjusted. It is permitted to move the fan to bring the flow of air closer, since this is considered litzorach gufo for your for the purpose of your of your of your need. Uh, again, mentioning gufo is uh, just in case I didn't explain it or you forgot. So litzorach gufo is. Um, for another permitted function, and Macomo is for the place, okay? So, uh, let's see. So it's permitted to move the fan, okay? So likewise, the fan may be moved so that the flow of air blows away from it, since this is considered the Tzorach Macomo for the place. So meaning, like, if it's too hot for you, then you need it closer, you can actually move it closer. You cannot change the dial, you can't change, like, if it's rotating at a certain speed, you can't change the speed. 
Or if you don't want it on, you can actually turn it. A lot of people may not have known that. Same thing for a heater. Um, so that's good information because a lot of people go by what they think is a halacha and there are allowances and that's good to know. Uh, percolators, crock pots, and coffee makers are classified as klisha malach tali isur. If they have water inside of them, it is permissible to move them as needed. If not, they may be moved only to tzorach gufo and tzorach makomo. E.g., remove them from the counter if their space is needed. So meaning because it's an isur, only if there's water inside of them, um, you can move them as you need them. Other examples of klisha malach tali isur include extension cords, adapters, scissors, Shabbos timers, nail clippers, fly swatters, regular pens as opposed to special artist pens or quills, um, which have a stricter classification, hole punches, staplers, umbrellas, hairbrush, and comb, gardening tools such as hose, rakes, and sprinklers. Wallets, um, there is a, a machlokas, a disagreement between the Ashkenazim and the Sephardim regarding wallets. When it has money in it, it's clearly muksa as a basis, meaning a base, it may not be moved at all because it already has money in it. You can't. However, if there's no money in the wallet, Ashkenazim are strict since it's designated for money. However, um, um, the, uh, the Spartan rule that it is permissible. Um, similarly, an empty tzedaka box, or tzedaka pouch, as they are an empty case of musical instruments, is also not muxa. So just an empty case, then there's nothing in it. A toothbrush. According to the post scheme, uh, that brushing a teeth with toothpaste is prohibited. A toothbrush is kalisha malach to isur. Chacham Ovadia had a famous ruling to permit the use of toothpaste on Shabbat, in which case the toothbrush is not considered muxa at all. There's other uh, talks about that as well, and I, I actually don't use a toothbrush um, at all. That's just my thing. I once read somewhere. So I choose not to um, just because uh, I'd rather be a little stricter on that. And so I just floss. I have cut floss and I just do um, mouthwash. And just for one day, I don't think it's so bad. So I think this is very interesting information that we can apply. And now that we understand things that we are permitted to do or not permitted to do, that's very important because we want to follow Derech Vashem and we want to do His will so that we all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beis HaMikdash. Amen and thanks for watching.